Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. So in this problem, they want us to write an exponential equation for the graph below, and they want us to explain how we determine that equation. So with any graph, it's a really good idea to try and get a sense of the data they're giving you. Um, so before I really get into anything, I just want to know what points can I actually read on this graph? What can I actually see? So I can see this point right here. That's 2 comma 1. That's going to help me. I see this point here as well. It's 3 comma 2. And I see, what else do I see? 4 comma 4. Right, that works. And then 5 comma 8 right here. All right. So when we're setting this up in a table, right, we want to think about our inputs, x's, right, the first number at each point, and the output, f of x, or y. Right, so you can say y or f of x, they're both our outputs. We're trying to find the equation that relates these points, and I'll put them in order. 2 comma 1, 3 comma 2, 4 comma 4, and then 5 comma 8. Okay. So here we're not really looking for a slope, we're looking for the amount that we're actually multiplying by. So here if you notice, as x goes up by 1, right, we double our number, we multiply by 2. And then as x goes up by 1 again, we double our number again, we're multiplying by 2. And for every time that we go up by 1 and x, we double our number. So this tells me right away, when we write our exponential functions, if they look like this, f of x equals p sub 0, um, a to the x. This is a fancy way of saying that exponential functions in this form, we know that we're looking for a, the base. That's the number that we're, we're multiplying by each time or dividing by. And p sub 0 is the y-intercept of our function, as long as we're not adding on a number like 6 or 3 or 5 or whatever. Um, this number will always be the y-intercept, and we'll talk about that in this video. And we can use this idea. We found A, right? Right here. A is the number we're multiplying by each time in this case, in this problem. So we know already that this function, f of x, equals some intercept. And then the base, um, the number we're multiplying by each time, is 2 to the x. So we're almost there. We just need to find out what the starting point is. Now, we have all of these points, so let's use them. Let's use the, the, the point that's the most basic, is the smallest one, 2, 1. In this point, we're told that for this function, when x is 2, the output y is 1. So when x is 2, y is 1. We can plug that into our function. So p sub 0 times 2 to the x, well, x is 2. And y is f of x. Those are interchangeable. y and f of x both represent the output. So here we can say f of x is 1. So now we just solve for p sub 0, the starting point. 2 to, two to the squared is 4, so p sub 0 times 4 equals 1. And to solve for the starting point, divide everything by 4. And p sub 0 is 1 fourth. So our formula would be f of x equals 1 fourth times 2 to the x. And this will work. Let's try it out, because you might feel shaky when you get one of these equations. You want to make sure your equation actually works. So here, let's see if it does indeed equal, we said, 1 fourth times 2 to the x. So if we plug in x is 2, then what do we get? 1 fourth times 2 squared, and a fourth of 4 is 1. So that works. It gives us the right output. That's what we just tested, right? Let's test the next one. What is a fourth of, oops, I did it wrong. I did the right thing. What is a fourth of 2 to the third, right? Well, 2 to the third is 8, and a fourth of 8 is 2, so we get the right output. Now, with the input of 4, we should get an output of 4 here. 1 fourth of 2 to the fourth. Well, 2 to the third was 8, so 2 to the fourth is twice that, so it's 16, and a fourth of 16 is 4. So it's working. We're plugging in the inputs, and this formula is giving us the appropriate outputs. It does represent our exponential function. Um, so that's one way of doing this, right? We can use this form. And to get to why this is the intercept, why does p sub 0 represent the intercept, this number up here, um, remember that on your y-axis, that's where y-intercepts are, this point right here, any point on the y-axis, we know that x has to equal 0. And if you plug in 0, even into this general form right here, 
that takes this term, a to the x power, right? If a is to the 0 power, let me use a different color, if a is to the 0 power, anything except for 0 to the 0 power is 1. So, in this form, we have when x is 0, when our exponent is 0, and we plug it in, all that's left is 1, this becomes 1, because anything to the 0 is 1, times p sub 0, right? So we get the y-intercept, right, if we plug in 0 for x. In this case, it is 1 fourth. So I hope I explain that clearly again. The reason that this value represents the intercept is because when x is 0, this part of your equation is just the number 1. And 1 times p sub 0 is p sub 0. So when x is 0, uh, we have to get an output of p sub 0. Um, without too many zeros in the explanation. But uh, aside from that, another way to deal with this, if you don't like this approach, you can use the calculator. Um, if you press stat and you go to your list under edit here, now you might have a bunch of stuff in your list. You can select the list heading, hit clear and enter. It'll clear it for you. And here as well, clear and enter. So this will, the calculator can actually find the equation as well, which is kind of cool, right? So here we can enter our points, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then here we can enter the outputs, 1 and 2, and 4 and 8. And then we're basically done, because if we go back to stat, and if you go down under calc, under 0, you see x regression. This means, um, this means drawing an exponential function that best represents the data you're given. In this case, if we hit enter, and then select the two list, second 1, comma, list 2, those are our x and y's, we just entered them in those lists, and hit enter. What we're going to get here is a is 0.25, notice a is the, the, the p sub 0, the starting point, b is 2, that's our, that's our base, and r is called the, co the correlation coefficient, and if r is 1, that means you've got a perfect fit. 1 is the highest value you can get for r, so this means this equation perfectly represents this data. All right, hope this helps.